It's not uncommon for couples to come into the office who are in their second marriage. Now, typically, they just want to provide for both their new spouse and for their own children, but oftentimes the trouble I see when it comes to blended families situations is often even before the second marriage occurs. I'll give you an example. I had a guy come into my office maybe two years ago who had accidentally been disinherited from his family's home. So in his situation, what had happened was that his mom and dad had the home with what we call joint tenancy with the right of survivorship. And it was set up so that when one spouse died, the property just went over to the surviving spouse. In this situation, the dad died first and the mom took over the property and she later remarried. Well, when she remarried, she put the property into rights of survivorship with her new husband. Everything would have been fine had the new husband died first, but in this situation, she died first. And when she died, the property went over to the new husband. And as you can imagine, when the new husband passed away, he left the property to his children and not to the original couple's children. So this man, unfortunately, had been disinherited accidentally from the family home. So oftentimes I see these types of problems occur even before the second marriage occurs. Some things you can do include things like having a marriage contract, and you know what these are called. These are called prenuptial agreements. I don't often see these with couples that come into my office. They've been married, and maybe they've been married for quite some time, but the prenuptial agreement is just something that they don't consider. So oftentimes they don't have that. Doing a postnuptial agreement oftentimes is much more difficult. So some of the things that you can do if you are in a blended family situation is that you can make sure that your last will and testament is shored up and it says what it needs to say. In Georgia, interestingly enough, you can disinherit your own spouse. It's the only state in the union where you can do that, but you can leave nothing to your spouse in Georgia. But more than likely, you might want to split it up where maybe your new spouse receives half of your inheritance and your children from your previous marriage receive the other half. One of the things that you can do is just leave the assets to the children directly in the last will and testament. That's probably one of the more wise things to do. But the better thing to do is is probably to leave the assets in a trust. And in the trust, you can designate how those assets are to be divided up. So make sure your last will and testament, uh, if you leave everything to your spouse, your new spouse in your last will and testament, there may come a situation where you pass away, everything is left to your spouse, and your spouse remarries. And when they do, they can do whatever they want with everything that you left them. And oftentimes what happens is it gets left to the new husband or the new wife and then ultimately left to the new husband's and new wife's children instead of your own. And of course, again, make sure that your your trust, uh, trust is very flexible and can be changed and your will can be changed as well. But the trust is just much more easy to work with. Another thing you want to be concerned with is beneficiary designations and things like life insurance policies, 401ks, IRAs, things of that nature. you got to be beware of this. If you leave everything to your spouse, remember once you leave everything to your spouse, if they remarry, there's always that possibility that they end up leaving your children inadvertently uh, out of, of an inheritance, sometimes on purpose. Maybe things change in the dynamics with the children and the new spouse decides to Uh, or your spouse decides to leave everything to the new husband or wife. And so if you leave everything to your spouse with a beneficiary designation, just beware that that type of situation can occur. More than likely, what you might want to do with your beneficiary designations is leave everything 50-50, you know, half to your spouse and half to your children. That way your children are guaranteed to receive a portion of those policies and your spouse will be uh, benefited from the policies as well. Again, you could leave it just in a trust and have the trust divided out. That way you can make sure everybody's getting what they should and that it's an appropriate amount. A trust can help uh, make sure that that occurs. So in summary, you want to be careful with joint property. There's a lot of perils when it comes to joint property, so just be aware if you happen to have a lot of property jointly owned with the rights of survivorship with your spouse. Consider getting a marriage contract uh, if you are considering getting married. If you're already married, you might want to consider a postnuptial agreement, but that's a little bit more difficult. The easiest thing to do is to make sure that your will or your trust is set up appropriately so that 
uh, things are divided up between your spouse and your children and so that everything isn't just being left to your new spouse. And finally, you want to make sure that you be careful with your beneficiary designations. Again, if you leave everything to your new spouse, once the new spouse gets it, there's no guarantee that your children will ever receive any benefit from it. So those are the things that you can do. We help blended families take care of these types of issues all the time, and we would be glad to assist you as well.